welcome to this presentation. Um, very quick introduction about myself. I work as the chief customer officer with 84 Codes and uh, mainly Cloud AMQP here in terms of RabbitMQ. Um, I've been doing that for six years and um, I've been then doing debugging of various message brokers um, most of the days there. I try to stay active, not only weightlifting and running, but also on RabbitMQ users, the RabbitMQ Slack, and on the RabbitMQ GitHub. Um, how does CloudAMQP work with support? We have uh, engineers on three continents for like a true 24-7 uh, support. Um, and we are... When you talk to us, you're directly talking to an engineer. There is no one checking if you have support on your account and then uh, sending your ticket on, on its way. You're directly talking to some of us that are, are engineers and trained in debugging this. We have on-call rotations for uh, with pager duty, with escalation policies, so you can escalate issues. And we have uh, uh, schedules that follows the sun so that there's... Uh, hopefully someone uh, at their desk when your issue uh, hits. Also, I want to point out that all our developers also do uh, customer on call, uh, helping customers with issues so that they um, stay focused on, on, on uh, helping our customers because that's what, 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 what we're here for. Um, in RabbitMQ, so these are the most common issues um, that, that happen, like there, there's heart beating failures, there's precondition failures, um, there's various leaks, I'll go into that in more detail uh, later. There's churn uh, issues related to, to, um, to the churn, uh, timeouts. Older versions with known bugs, uh, not using prefetch and not clearing the browser cache. So once you've upgraded RabbitMQ, you go into the management interface, it looks like it's not loading. Well, it's because there's no cache busting. So uh, you need to, to refresh. Um, what does it look like for, for us when, when, when we're working? Uh, well, we, we tackle support issues. We help uh, customers before there's issues. So uh, architecting and designing, uh, provide feedback to their ideas of how they want to, to uh, develop their systems. Uh, we also reproduce and report a fair number of bugs in our own systems and in uh, RabbitMQ. Uh, we test new features and configurations. So this is trying to, to find the optimal performance because all the cloud vendors uh, keep releasing new types of, of instances and um, new disks, new configuration options. So we try to find what's what's optimal and at the lowest cost. So um, we also provide uh, help with marketing materials and inputs to to development. We help out with yeah various tasks and and help um, help customers. Um, we're also standing on the shoulder of. Giants. So when debugging, you're so to say not not alone. Uh, we have all these these different tools. What's available in the RabbitMQ management? What's available in RabbitMQ? Uh, what's available in the Erlang virtual machine? Um, and what's on the operating system level? So perf and s trace and and similar tools that can help you when when um, the the other tools have have failed you so to say and on on the side we have prometheus which uh, can can actually scrape and monitor a lot of these things uh, already and keep uh, and give you a basically a, a database of what has happened in the past so let's imagine that that we have a problem um and uh what do we do well most of the time, we once once we've gotten to the problem, that that's that's actually a, a big thing in understanding exactly what the problem is. But we have some data somehow. We have we have metrics, we have logs, maybe we have crash dumps. Uh, we have some tools. Some of them I showed you, like the observers, different forensic tools. You can examine logs and use tracing. 
Um, and then we have the experience and knowledge of been doing this for a long time and we've seen many similar issues before. So many times we can, can see, okay, this issue uh, we've seen before and we know how to solve it. Sometimes that's, that's not the case. Uh, if this looks familiar, you might have read um, a book called How to Solve It uh, by Polya. And there, uh, it's more geared towards ma mathematics, but the idea is the same. Understand the problem, devise a plan for how to tackle the problem, carry out the plan, and then examine, like, does your hypothesis stand with with um, uh, with the arguments that, that that you've seen, that's a little bit more geared towards mathematics, but it it, it still carries on through through here. So as as an example here, I bring up just a screenshot from from one cluster, um, and just by looking at one of these metrics, you can already start to build a mental model of what is happening on the system. So in for these three nodes, okay, I can see that. One has a much longer uptime than the others. Okay, that's interesting. These two have recently restarted for some reason. Um, I can see that out of the 247 connections, most of them are on node one. Okay, that means that somehow the, the users are not reconnecting. And I can also, just by looking at this overview dashboard, I can also see that most of the Erlang processes are on the first node, meaning that it's probably doing more work uh, in terms of more queues, more, uh, more channels, more connections, um, more traffic. Um, and already from, from this thing, we can start building that mental model. And this is why I'm saying that support engineers are somehow also storytellers because we build a story of what has happened and what um, um, what are the reasons for that. Okay, so back to why does RabbitMQ stop? Um, the, the title comes from um, uh, Jim Gray's paper, Why Do Computers Stop and What Can Be Done About It? And it's referenced in Joe Armstrong's uh, PhD thesis uh, and I happened to be there in 2003 in, in Chista, uh, just out of, of chance. I did not know what Erlang was at the time, but, but it was, it was a, a fun thesis presentation. Um, so uh, the short of it is, is what, what you saw in Luca's keynote this morning. Uh, to achieve fault containment, share no state with other processes. Okay, so we have these processes that are sending messages to each other. Okay. Now... Um, why does RabbitMQ stop? This is the, the, the summary of, of the talk is one process hugs all the memory. So that's the Erlang mailbox will never get emptied. Uh, disk space filled up, memory is filled up. Um, something goes wrong related to clustering or um, something is wrong in Nisha, the schema store. Uh, or you can't process all the traffic. Um, there's also hardware issues. I can't blame Rabbit for that, but that does cause Rabbit to stop. Or there's some type of lockup, like um, the lockup that Klarna reported, where there's a uh, something that locks up the whole whole cluster. That's that's very rare, but it's something to to mention. Uh, contrast this with what uh, Robert V. Ring says in his um, uh, Hitchhiker's Tour of of the Beam. How to crash the Erlang virtual machine? Well, you can do it with locks and synchronization. Okay, fill up the atom table. This is not doesn't happen that much with RabbitMQ. Uh, you could fill it up with running RabbitMQ status all the time, but but it's very rare. Um, binary space, yes. Uh, uncontrolled process heap growth, yes. Um, and then Erlang uh, errors in NIFs and linked port drivers. Maybe not that often in, in uh, RabbitMQ. Um, so one way to, to, um, uh, to, to analyze issues is to use something called the use method, utilization, saturation, and errors, um, which is pioneered by Brendan Gregg, performance engineer at Netflix. Um, and it's very good because uh, it's easy to understand and it finds a lot of, of issues. Um, what you do is you look at, for each resource, um, 
that needs to work. So here I call it that we have four resources. We need disk, we need memory, we need uh, CPUs, and we need networking for Rabbit clusters to work. Uh, for each of them, check, are there errors present? Okay, are there utilization issues? Or is there saturation? Okay, investigate that, uh, identify the problem, yes or no, and keep on going until you've solved it. So how do we find servers with issues? Uh, we have continuous monitoring of all our servers. So that gives us a lot of, um, um, a lot of the issues. Like a server is down, um, someone will look at it and, and see why that, why that happens. Or a support request and customer emails in and says, we can't publish to Q1 in, in cluster two. Um, Erlang crash dumps, um, if the Oom killer is active, we log that and look at that. Uh, we can also look at uh, logs and run analysis on the logs continuously. So just the overview here is that Rabbit is extremely robust. Uh, this comes from, from the Erlang virtual machine and how it's uh, architectured. And with sensible inputs, it, it's very rare that there's a whole cluster failure. Um, and it's more common that individual subsystems fail. So that um, a part of the system fails, but you can still go on. So shovels are failing, okay, but you, you're still, you can still connect and, and use your queues, but you can't shovel, okay, then, then that's something. Uh, and just to, just to give you an overview of, of what this looks like, this is the uh, uh, Erlang monitor uh, showing the, all the applications running, which is you know, a lot just from, from, from a standard system. Uh, let's do a quick uh, run through of examples of why RabbitMQ is actually stopping. So things that have been caught in the wild. Um, one example of this Erlang mailbox issue is convert to lazy bug. So here you have a, a classic queue uh, and you've changed the policy to make it into a lazy queue. Um, this can, in some certain, uh, uh, some with some constraints, uh, turn into an infinite uh, recursion. And um, what happens there is that it keeps on trying to, to convert this queue. And you'll see that the mailbox here, four, four in this case, there's four queues that are trying to be converted. Uh, they are not getting cleared. Um, and for in this case, if, if we map that up in, in, into the to the use method here, uh, we can see that there's um, uh, not so much memory, but definitely a CPU as as these processes are using a lot of reductions and um, the customer can cannot uh, continue processing messages on those four queues. The other queues are still working. Uh, and here you have to restart that queue process. Uh, sh shovel buffers bug, this is a uh, uh, potentially uh, detrimental bug where um, we're sending messages between two clusters and we're using um, on publish uh, if a memory alarm triggers on the downstream clusters, we can have the messages accumulate in the Erlang mailbox on the upstream cluster. This is being fixed in 3.11 using flow control, um, but uh, it will definitely lead to a uh, memory issue. If it's not, if you're running a version that's not fixed. Uh, networking saturated. Um, this is, in this case, uh, it's actually a symptom and it's not the, the, the fault. So um, from this node, you can see, if you look at the cluster links with, with the uh, nodes that it's talking to, you can see that one of the links are, are running fine, but the other one has this very spiky behavior indicating that something is, is wrong. And um, what is wrong here is that there are two things. The Osiris replicas are restarting 
and the mirrored queues are also uh, restarting and filling up the intranode buffers. So that's that's a networking issue, but you see related to that uh, disk, CPU, and memory. So that, that's uh, pretty bad. Um, underlying hardware issue, I just mentioned this. It's very rare that a virtual machine goes down in the, the big clouds. They're very stable, um, but um, it, it does happen that that virtual machine go, goes down. Um, and if they do, it's extremely rare that they continue to go down. So uh, if, if you see something like this, this was a, uh, a cluster where we had one node continuously going down every 24 hours. So there we had to completely replace that machine to, to uh, resolve that. This is not Rabbit's fault, uh, but it, it's, it impacts the cluster anyway. Um, I'll skip through. We've already looked at uh, backing up mailboxes, different ways to do that. Uh, it does hit um, the memory and CPU. Um, process leak, this is uncommon, um, but it's instead of one process filling up or several processes filling up, you have many uh, internal PIDs being created. Uh, and there was a MQTT issue in 3.8.1 to 4 or something. Um, and uh, what you can see there, it, it, it can be hard to trigger, but you can see that the number of Erlang processes keeps on climbing. Memory usage might keep on climbing. And if you sort um, and look at which applications are, are having processes, you can see that, OK, RabbitMQ subsystem is using a lot. 26,000 uh, processes there. And especially if this is related to these processes using uh, allocating some, some memory, then, then you can uh, definitely get into uh, memory issues. Uh, leaks of all kinds are, are, are bad. Um, and um, it, it inherently affects all of these. Uh, if, if you have a leak in connections or queues, your CPU is going to, to um, uh, become saturated and, and memory and disk if you have unbounded uh, queues. Uh, I want to quickly touch on quorum queues because that's uh, what, um, what we should be, be moving towards. Uh, we haven't seen any message loss issues with uh, quorum queues where, when they're operating normally. That's amazing. That's great. Um, there are, there can be issues if you're rapidly changing cluster configurations. We've seen um, an issue where a leader, um, it still thinks that the leader is on a node that has been deleted. So there was something that, that created a state where, where the queue didn't want to, to come back. And there's also uh, at least one issue with segment uh, clearing um, and um, that will lead to, um, to uh, a storage runway. So, uh, or um, here's one over, I guess about a month of time where, where uh, disk usage has slowly been, been creeping up to 120 gigabytes there. Um, there's also Misha issues. These are hard to uh, show with, with graphics, but, but they uh, can happen. Okay, so what about the what can be down about it part? First, use all the limits. Uh, I say if it can leak, it will at some point leak. So limit queues, connections, channels, consumers, everything. Read my blog post, how to use all the limits. Uh, stay updated, uh, not on the bleeding edge, but, but updated. Um, and I, I think that maybe RabbitMQ's biggest problem is that it's so stable that some organizations forget that it's still running uh, until an issue happens. Uh, use best practices. Um, Mirrored queues maybe was a good uh, option in 2011 when it was introduced, but there are better options today. So use those. Um, monitor your cluster and set alarms. 
Uh, I also encourage you to participate in the ecosystem like you're doing right now, um, being a part of the RabbitMQ Summit. Uh, this tweet I thought was fun. Uh, <laughs> um, without, without civilization, we are just, just an ape. Um, and um, right now, Rabbit has the benefit of being extremely widely de deployed, uh, but the community around it is still small enough that you can kind of get to know everyone. Okay, uh, conclusions. Um, process installation appro approach from Erlang does work, check. Quorum queues work great, check, use them. Classic queues also works if they're not mirrored, use that. Uh, stay updated, not too updated. Um, use limits, best practices, and participate in the ecosystem. Okay, thank you very much.